this hadith, um, it's interesting actually, just as a phenomenon. Um, there are several hadith that the Prophet ﷺ cited this poem, or at least this uh, part of the of the stanza. Now, I, it comes in Tirmidhi, I believe in the Adab al-Mufrad of Bukhari, it's in Nasa'i, it's in a bunch of other uh, narrations as well. What's interesting, I'll tell you, is there is a narration that comes in... Um, the Musnad of, um, sorry, in, um, I believe it's in the uh, the Musannaf of Abdul Razak. Okay, so um, it comes there, but it's transmitted through uh, Abdul Razak that that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to read this poem and got it wrong. It comes in the tafsir of this ayah in Surah Yasin, wa ma allamnahu shi'ar. Okay, that we did not teach him poetry and it was not befitting of him. Now, this does not mean the Prophet ﷺ was not a poet and he wasn't interested in poetry. He had an incredibly serious task at hand that completely immersed the Prophet's attention and his life since prophethood. So, he wasn't interested in poetry, but he didn't. Uh, he wasn't averse to poetry, as some people feel. Maybe to certain poetry that was just about, um, you know, humiliating people and things like that, or that was glorifying um, superstition and and that kind of stuff. But otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith that "Inna min al-shi'ari la hikma." Indeed, wisdom is found in poetry, and some people maybe out of a love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and trying to distance him from poetry when they transmitted this they said that oh he got it wrong so in this transmission that you find with abdul razak he says this line that the prophet he says the whole poem so tubdi lak al ayyamu um ma kunta jahilan wa ya'tika Instead of وَيَأْتِكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّدِ It says وَيَأْتِكَ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّدْ بِالْأَخْبَارِ So it's got the poem wrong. Like it's saying the same meaning but it's not in the poetic. And then Abu Bakr in this trans in this narration corrects the Prophet. He says لَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ It's not this. It's actually وَيَأْتِكَ بِالْأَخْبَارِ مَنْ لَمْ تُزَوِّدِ And then the Prophet says Oh, don't you know uh, Allah never taught me poetry and it doesn't befit me. You see, in some ways, and I'm kind of reading into the um, the minds of these people narrating this, maybe they're coming from a place of love for the Prophet wasallam, that they are trying to distance the Prophet even further from poetry. You see that they're trying to say, well, oh, we don't want people to say that the Prophet knew poetry. So let's distance him further. And somewhere along the line, maybe somebody has um, has manipulated this narration or they've mistold it to say, oh, and the Prophet got the poem wrong. You see, and, and that is a misplaced love. You see, because the Prophet wasallam even... He wasn't a poet, but he was aware of his surroundings. He knew that people said poetry. He'd heard many poems whilst growing up because that was the thing. It's like, you know, somebody may not be into movies today or into TV series or into, but they've heard of them. They know what they are. They will know. I know what Breaking Bad is about. I know what you know, I don't know, Lost or these other uh, different TV series, they know what they are about, whether they've watched them or not, because they are a part of that social fabric. This in no way takes detracts. In fact, it really shines a light on the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi his life, that he was a part and parcel of that. So, People, maybe somebody, this is explains, this is the rationale behind behind this transmission. 
that where this story comes from, because it's a, it's absolutely weak, this narration, and it's been uh, declared weak, and many people have clearly said that it's weak and unacceptable. But maybe this is some of the rationale behind it, that they're trying to, that there's this love for the Prophet, and they're trying to put it in a in a nice light. And what's interesting is even Imam Malik, you know, Ibn Abi Hatim brings in his response he brings the chain going back uh to imam malik that imam malik says because in this chain you've got from abdul razak ma'mar from qatada from aisha and he says uh malik says that uh yeah you know he, honestly this is i've always imam malik he says ma'mar he says what a guy because ma'mar is this transmitter who has so many narrations and he says what a guy he says if only he didn't have this problem he says you know this if only he didn't have this hustler this bad issue with him this quality if we can call it a quality and they say yeah Abu Abdullah, the Imam Malik, what's this thing and he says he's taking tafsir from qatada because qatada he would transmit on many occasions uh, his tafsir was often unreliable and even in this narration qatada is saying directly that aisha says this obviously qatada's never met aisha anha. so you can see this tradition and you could see maybe people along the way maybe doing it with a good intention to kind of add value to the Prophet. But the Prophet وسلم, is in such value. We, it's not our place to add value. He is already so valued. You see, we don't need to distort any of the facts to try to, to think that it will make him more valuable. The Prophet is already incredibly valuable beautifully valuable to us as he is we don't need to manipulate anything and an imam malik correcting that there as well saying that look this it's just wow it's a gem and it is the narration is that the prophet did say at least half of the line and he didn't say mistakenly he knew the line he said he said said that, you know, time will teach you what you are ignorant of. This line from Tarfat ibn al-Abd al-Bakri's Mu'allaqa. People...